Hi, and welcome to The Language Lie. A podcast about idioms. I'm Ingrid. I'm Casey. Casey, how's it going? It's great. How are you doing? I'm great. It's a fantastic, beautiful day here. Cool. I actually Same. made a note to myself that was like, please don't talk about the weather anymore. Mm. And that was your opener. <laughs> yes. It's, cool. I'm doing great. How about everything over there you and know why because we put out the episode like two weeks late and yes. then by then it's freezing <laughs> we put out the episode two weeks to possibly three months later yes 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 so. between now and february we should put this episode out <laughs> um. yes uh well i'm really excited because i hear you have an idiom to tell me about i today. have an idiom to tell you about today as I was just about to say, uh, this one, I want to shout out to Tall Kyle at Patica. Oh, um, Tall Kyle. I love Tall Kyle. Yeah, because he suggested this idiom. Um, <laughs> those... I also love that there has to be a distinction between Kyle's. This doesn't apply to anyone who's listening to this podcast who doesn't go to this coffee shop that Casey and I are referring to. But the, I, I saw other Kyle there the other day is a Kyle mm-hmm. who used to work at the coffee short shop. Kyle <laughs> and he's a very tall person he's also very and tall I was like hey Kyle but I never knew him super well and then I saw tall Kyle later and I was like wait did I call the other Kyle the wrong name just because I'm thinking did I call the other Kyle tall Kyle <laughs> no I was like how how are there this many people named Kyle and now I've reach the syn- syntactic satiation with that word where I'm like Kyle isn't a name no it's not it's, a, it's fake okay sorry uh, shout out to tall Kyle tall Kyle who's like eight feet tall probably mm-hmm. works at Patica uh didn't get his permission to use his name or likeness on this podcast so <laughs> apologies we're gonna get sued by tall Kyle <laughs> oh no perfect you can have it all um <laughs> this idiom is... Oh, that's the idiom. You can have it all? No. Oh. <laughs> nope. I was giving him the podcast. Okay. Yes. Like, you can have the podcast. Thanks. Take it. The idiom is shoe in, as in mm. they're a shoe in to win. I like this one. Do you know? Have you heard of this? There are a few I don't like. And yes, I have heard shoe in. Uh your shoe in means you're absolutely gonna win the thing unless you completely to use another idiom screw the pooch um you're a shoe in you're gonna but I think it usually or maybe this says something about my personality but I think it usually uh, relates to winning right correct yeah so okay. it's typically in the context that we know it today um is in regards to an election or some sort of competition. So uh, Merriam-Webster defines this as one that is certain or one that is a certain and easy winner. Uh, Cambridge Dictionary says someone who is certain to win an election or competition, like I just said. So So it doesn't say anything negative about my personality that I just think of it about winning. You are so competitive. I am very competitive at toss. (laughs) <laughs> yes. uh urban dictionary gives us an example uh australia are a shoe-in for cricket world cup for the cricket world cup cambridge dictionary gives us another um example the padres are a shoe-in to win the pennant this season whatever that's, those words mean i think that's never true right i feel like i looked up world series people who have not won the world series and i think the padres have never won but okay write me if i'm wrong okay that seems very specific. or if i'm right and sports related for someone who <laughs> called it toss earlier <laughs> but we definitely mm-hmm. uh, believe you um great so lots of sports references lots of election references okay yeah from what i'm, from what I'm seeing on on the internet I can do see you that. know where this comes from Hmm. immediately like running shoes some sort of athletic shoe and someone is barely like they're breaking the finish line before someone else by their one shoe over the mark oh 
a shoe in the finish line. Mm -hmm. I see. Incorrect. Uh, it's, <laughs> so first thing I want to say is it's actually spelled S-H-O-O. -O. Oh, I don't like that at all. In, um, and there's usually a hyphen. So S-H-O-O -O hyphen I-N. Wow. In. The more traditional I've Spot. possibly been not correcting for this my entire career. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I for don't those think of you that use don't it know, <laughs> Ingrid edits books for a living, and uh, I have never corrected this one. that. <laughs> yes, great. I have never corrected that particular thing. Great. Um, so the origins are go back pretty far. Um, to shoo generally means to scare, drive, or send something or mm. someone away just just got my my great aunt used to yell at animals that would come on her porch and say scat oh which cool. it's very weird now that i think of it i'm gonna pause for one second there's like someone banging outside one sec We know how much my microphone likes to pick up terrible noises. So. <laughs> Ambient sounds. Yes. Um, great. So Edom Online, which I think is short for etymology online. They've just shortened it in hmm. a terrible way. Edom e Online. E-T-Y-M? Yes. Online. Okay. All one word. No dash. No nothing. Mm. Says. Yeah. It was a choice. Um says that the um, exclamation shoe kind of came in um, into circulation around the late 15th century, um, originally spelled S-H-O-U, uh, again, to drive something away. A lot of times um, in regards to birds or other sort of like small creatures. Um, and they say like, perhaps it was just sort of an instinctive sound um, or that sound was particularly effective to get the creatures away. I don't know. Creatures. I wasn't there. Okay. I'm old, but not that old. So <laughs> uh, Miriam gives, uh, Miriam Webster gives uh, sort of the, the the link between just shooing someone away and kind of how we got to shoe in um, that, you know, there are other variations of that, of like shooing in a kid from the playground into the classroom. You'd shoo them into the classroom. Okay. Um, you kind of shuffle them in. And then eventually that took hold um, and the word shoe in started to be part of the vernacular around the 1930s, um, huh. 1920s, 1930s. Um, and it was oftentimes used in horse racing. Um, and it began, it really took hold um, to refer to a rigged race uh, where one horse was sure to win because of cheating oh horseshoes no again it's not no. shoe okay no. nope we covered that a little bit earlier i understand i was just thinking that <laughs> the spelling possibly changed though you did just go through all of the spelling things so sorry <laughs> go ahead we can edit that out <laughs> no uh, <laughs> I, i'm perfectly comfortable with how ridiculous i sound um and yeah, and so the idea became basically that the same concept of shooing something away or shooing something in, like inside, like a child, um, with basically shooing the horse across the finish line at uh, as the winner. Um, and so basically came to mean a sure win, but with the connotation of cheating. Okay. Um, which over the years that has sort of faded and now it doesn't have that negative connotation of, you know, if, huh. if an election is definitely going to go one way and the candidate has a shoe in to win, it's not necessarily um, expected that there's cheating happening. Um, so at some point in time, um, that, that negative connotation kind of faded. Um, likely at the decline of like, you know, horse racing being like a huge thing and, sort of faded. Um, anyway, uh, so that is the origin, relatively short. I love um, it. I will say that shoe sounds like 
sorry, Shu, S-H-O-O, -O, sounds like Shu, S-H-O-E. Mm -hmm. um, as, as I have. <laughs> as you've demonstrated twice so far. So far. Um, and it's actually a pretty common mistake uh, that happens um, in a lot of publications. Um, so vocabulary.com has an article about it. Um, this is a quote, Pittsburgh is a shoe in as long as Allegheny County, which controls modern underused airport, blows it with high taxes. That's from the New York Times. They misspelled shoe in. Yeah, I didn't edit that article, A. And B, the New York Times has some really egregious typos, hmm. like particularly the online edition. I oh. will be reading things sometimes and I'm like, has no one looked at this ever? Like, it's just kind of, it. I'm like, how did the writer even get these things wrong? But yeah, I would imagine if you're editing, I mean, you know this more than I do. So don't let me mansplain <laughs> this to you. <laughs> would you like to mansplain? I would imagine my... that if I were an editor. Would you like to mansplain my career of 20 years to me, Casey? Yes. Please, Thank I'm just going to sum it up real okay. quick in a little cool. sound bite. Mm -hmm. um, I'd imagine if you're editing a bunch of stuff on a time crunch, some I, I would guess some things kind of just kind of blur together. Is yeah, that... it's amazing what the the mind will overlook. And it's not even on a time crunch. I mean, yeah, yeah, I get things that have been looked at by five people and there are still errors in them and I'm sure that I leave some in there as well uh it's just your your brain kind of glosses over things frequently mm. that said the New York Times should do a little bit better yeah well, <laughs> let's make sure to tag them yes 100 percent in this episode we'll, we'll do I'm sure they'd be thrilled do you have do you have like a process that you or do you have like internalized tools that you use to kind of like make sure that you're focusing on stuff yeah I mean you take entire courses and things around what to look for they teach this I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> shockingly there is there are courses that you can take around this this subject hmm. but yeah I mean you have whole lists uh we could we could make another podcast about the process of editing if you'd like no, no, nope. one is cool. plenty. Thank you, though, <laughs> so much. You have enough to do. Yes. Um, okay, cool. So, one more thing before we go, I'm going to send you something. And if you can read this, I want to let you know that this is from an album called Doom Wop. No, nope. um, I meant to look this album up and I completely forgot because I wanted to get a sense of what it actually sounded like um but it has the word doom in it so if you could do like doom and gloom a little screamo so not necessarily doing... you don't have to like scream it but like, don't, don't worry a. take the essence of <laughs> um we're doing like a death metal situation here yes please okay. I think that's oh. like I think you just kind of like generalize a lot because I think doom core and death metal are probably different but I, is I'm Doom sure most Core, of our listeners know. <laughs> is Doomcore a thing? I think so, yeah. Wow, I need to do... Oh, I'm so excited about what I'm doing with the rest of my day. Yeah, Doomcore is a thing. Researching Doomcore. I, I had a real... Like, it really messed with my brain when the little... I say little girl, the teenage girl who lived next door to me was like, oh, you're super cottagecore. I was like, what is what is happening? Why are those words? And you did live in a cottage. I did. You're correct. Um, okay. You wear a lot of sundresses. Like, I is that like... cottage core? I think, in the context of the cottage, yes. I thought cottage core was like, I don't know, Goldilocks and stuff. Okay. Didn't she have a sundress? I think she was did wearing you a ever... Oh did my God, we've ever... gone <laughs> walk real off the rails. Your yard. Did you ever walk around your yard with like a basket, like putting flowers in them? Probably. Okay, that's probably <laughs> Definitely probably about. did that. <laughs> okay. Maybe I can get a little leg up. Baby said it's really the issue. <laughs> Baby, honey, just a bit of money. That should do the trick that keeps me moving. Well, even if I had a bit of money, I still don't think I know what I'd be doing. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't even matter at all. Give me tips or tricks that get me moving. Move it. Baby, I thought you said it'd be a shoe in. Move it. Baby, I thought you said it'd be a shoe in. Wow, that was really good. 
Thanks. That's like that. You took that from that, like whatever Slipknot song or whatever, whatever song that is. I have no idea, and I don't want to know. Yeah, please don't tell it's me. It's a thing. I'll send it to you later. <clears throat> Thanks. Thanks. Haunting um, right. my nightmares later. Yeah. That was a very interesting song. Doomcore. Oh yeah, sorry. I should I should um, cite who they are. This is a 2022 song by Rickshaw Billy's Burger Patrol from their <laughs> album Doom Wop. Wow. Relatively new. Okay. The, the rest of the lyrics actually, I like. I kind of don't feel like it's like Doomcore, but I don't know. I have to. I meant to listen to it. I'm really sorry, everyone. <laughs> everyone go listen to it and report back please um so that's it i appreciate it that horse was racing. that's great horse racing s-h-o-o dash or hyphen i-n i'm gonna don't go ahead and say i still don't really understand but it's good you don't understand the origin of this do i have to do it again no it's okay it's uh, like a lot of idioms it's kind of like oh doesn't really make sense that people did that but all right hmm. it doesn't really make sense that we speak words so okay well now i just feel like you're making excuses for me <laughs> all right well if anyone else didn't get this just let me know here we i was we not an insult to, to you at all it's okay um well that was great thanks casey i can't believe i did bad research I'm you did great research it was wonderful and thank you succinct Yes. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, all right. Well, would you like an international idiom? Sure. All right. Um, there I've just recently looked one up. So in a lot of different languages, you can say like father, like son. Mm, yes. So just a quick one. I would like you to know that the Georgian version of that is like nation, like month monk like nation like monk this is how you felt with shoe in <laughs> yes <laughs> we could probably do a whole dive into why that is the thing that they say like in nation like monk mm -hmm. hmm. Hmm. that you seem underwhelmed i'm just confused the the correlation idioms are very confusing yes Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Where is that from? Jordan? Georgia. Georgia. Oh, my bad. Georgian is, it is oh, a Georgian oh, idiom. So cool. Yeah. Well, this was a um, catastrophic idiom podcast. <laughs> it today. was a fantastic one. We didn't learn anything. I think <laughs> that what we've discovered is as always, idioms are confusing and I love them. Um, so if you would like us to clarify anything further, you could email us at thelanguagelie at gmail.com. Or slide into our DMs at the language lie on Instagram. It's probably your best bet. I think we're yes. on Facebook. And we also are putting episodes on YouTube with uh, closed captioning. That's right. I keep forgetting to say that, but it does yeah. take a, <laughs> I, I do spend a lot of time doing it. So I wanted to make so sure you go over there them. and subscribe <laughs> to our YouTube channel. All right. It's the language lie. You have to search for the channel. But uh, <laughs> so we'll... the way that YouTube's work is, <laughs> it's a video platform. It is a video platform. You can find crazy things on there. All right. Well, we'll talk to you guys that next week. Cool. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Bye.